these are the breaks ladies and gentlemen it is august the 22nd and guess what it's not raining today it's nice and sunny out here we'll be right back on these are the breaks And these are the breaks. These are the breaks. You know what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome live from Infanity Studios here in Los Angeles. And what a busy weekend it has been. I mean, there's just so much to talk about. There's baseball, there's basketball, there's Team USA basketball as well. And there's also football. There was two games at SoFi Stadium this weekend, the Rams and the Raiders on Saturday. And you had the Chargers and the New Orleans Saints on Sunday night. But... Let's go ahead and talk about something that kind of came to my attention yesterday, you know. Um, as I was on Twitter, as you know, if you're not following me on Twitter right now, go to at Fredo Cervantes. Follow me there right now. Um, you know, we here in Los Angeles know and love the Lakers. And, you know, a lot of people out there want to say that I don't love the Lakers. And who knows whether I do or not. We'll find out once the season starts. But it's very interesting to see that. You know, when you talk to people that are not from Los Angeles, you talk to them and they kind of uh, let you know, like, well, you know, I've asked them. I'm like, hey, have you seen that new uh, TV show called Winning Time on HBO? Uh, whether it was this season or last season, they're just like, no, never, never heard of it. Don't even know about it. What's what, what's it about? And I kind of go on and explain the story. But, you know, HBO and Winning Time ain't paying me anything to really talk about their show. But right now, I actually have to go on their behalf and get you guys to watch their show because, you know, Overall, Winning Time on HBO, it's a great show, amazing show. It's a spectacular show. You know, you got some great actors. Um, it's so hilarious. I mean, believe it or not, it's funny. You will laugh at certain things that you see out there because a lot of people that were in that moment back in the days talk about like, well, you know, Jerry West wasn't really like that. But when you look at the way that Jerry West is portrayed on the TV show Winning Time, which is currently on season two, episode three premiered this past Sunday night on HBO, which you should be able to go and check it out on the HBO Max app, which that is an extra promotion we're giving you right there, Winning Time, get it. Um, but if you get a chance to see this show, you will come to realize that the story of the NBA's greatest franchise, the Los Angeles Lakers, is an amazing story to follow. If you watch season one, episode one, you will come and realize and be like, wow, hey, Fredo, you're actually right. This is a great basketball show. And I'm telling you, it's great. It's amazing. So you should definitely go and check it out. And, you know, you got to shout out uh, Jeff Perlman, who was the writer of the book, who wrote the book and who was also a guest here on Infinity TV months ago, um, did talk about recently on Twitter and said, hey, you know what? HBO right now is not 100% behind the production, meaning there is an opportunity and a chance that, you know, HBO will cancel after season two. That is the speculation out there. It's not, nothing's confirmed or nothing's for real, but it does seem like HBO might be pulling the plug and Jeff Perlman out there saying, hey, look, let's get the fans out there. Let's get the community out here to go out there and support the show. Download the HBO Max app, and, you know, maybe subscribe, you know, for a lot of subscribers out there. I believe you're getting about 14 days for free, your first uh, 14 day trial. So why not go out there, support, watch an amazing show. And, you know, at the same time, laugh your ass off um, because Jerry West is hilarious, man. Jerry West, it, it, he is my favorite character. And, you know, I also love Jerry Buzz, who's being played by John C. Riley. He was incredible he's funny as hell uh, which is something you guys should go ahead and watch but when you look at that how amazing that show is you got guys like norm nixon norm nixon's son who's actually playing the role um you got guys who's like uh what's his uh quincy uh quincy the guy that's playing magic johnson you also got uh kareem abdul jabbar 
um, who was also a part of the Profanity Nation podcast a few months ago. So it seems like there is a connection with Winning Time and Infanity Television. We've had a few of their uh, actors uh, be part of this network a few months ago. Uh, but all we can do right now, guys, is just go out there and support because according to Jeff Perlman, season three is the season we all want to watch. Apparently, that is the season that we all are kind of they're making us wait for it of course you know anytime you watch any tv series out there you can realize that okay sometimes you can be like well if it's a five season uh series and you know that season one is going to be good sometimes season two is crap uh but you realize that season three and four the later you get into it it gets better and of course um uh, there might be some more Kobe and Shaq kind of drama kind of thing, all right? So that is very, very important for everyone to go ahead and think about and realize that we might get something, something special if we do get the opportunity to go to uh, season three. But hey, guess what? It's all on your hands, ladies and gentlemen. So go out there, download the HBO Max app, and go ahead and watch uh, Winning Time, which is currently right now, of course, episode three just aired on Sunday. Spectacular episode, Boom. amazing uh, show. So make sure you check that out. And as well, check us out here while I'm promoting shows. Check us out here at the Profanity Nation podcast every Tuesday night, which you can go ahead and catch that in a few hours here on Infanity TV. TV. And of course, they got a, uh, they had a very special guest. They're going to be having an exclusive interview with some great Laker, which we'll be talking about a little later as well. But I do want to move on from, you know, winning time, of course, to give you a little quick shout out. Thank you very much. Now let's move on to some interesting basketball that happened on Sunday afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys got a chance to see what the Los Angeles Sparks were able to do on Sunday afternoon primetime in Las Vegas. They went in there and they took the heart out of the Aces and they defeated them 78 to 72. It was one of the best games that the LA Sparks have played all season long. And I'm telling you that because I have not missed a LA Sparks game this season. Um, we've seen every single piece and every single play, every single player that's been out there on that court this season. We've seen them all. We know what they're capable of. But what they've been doing over the last four games of the regular season right now, they are on a four-game winning streak, winning two away, two at home. Right now, they're coming back home to play the Phoenix Mercury, who are at the bottom He's of the fire. league. He's on fire! They are coming at the Galen Center on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, and you can definitely catch us there with LA Sparks Weekly here at Infanity Television, live from the Galen Center. Myself, Fredo, Michael, DJ. Um, but... One thing I do want to realize and talk to you guys about is how spectacular, how amazing Jordan Canada has been for this ball club here this season. I mean, when you look at Jordan, she is so crafty down there and she's so um, explosive as well. Once she goes off the screen, she's going to take it to the rack. And if she doesn't, she's going to pull back, step back and shoot that jumper. Or she's going to look for her teammates. She's going to look at Nika to the right. She's going to look at maybe Azure to the left or Dierica Hamby. One or the other, they're going to get a bucket. And that's why you got to look at the emergence of Zaya Cook. I mean, we know that, you know, for the people that follow me as well, they know how I've been talking a lot about Zaya over this past few months and she's finally kind of coming around and it's not just her it's the whole team that's the crazy part about it now I feel what head coach Kurt Miller was talking about all these months he was saying well look I don't got my team <laughs> what do you expect me to do Fredo I don't got my team I got seven players out here maybe at times I had six there was one game that they were this close in uh, uh, forfeiting their game. But thankfully, uh, Ray Burrell, who lived in Las Vegas, was able to go drive down to the T-Mobile Arena and suit up for the Sparks. If it wasn't for that, they would have forfeited the game. But it's been that bad for the L.A. Sparks. And at one point, they were the 12th best team in the league out of 13. 12th best. Right now, they are secured at the A spot. A game and a half above the Chicago sky. That lets you know that once this team gets healthy, they're up and running. You got everyone connecting in all points. There's nothing you can do to stop this team. They proved that on national television on Sunday afternoon against the Aces. Yeah, they don't have Candace Parker down there, but they, they had every other player. They had, they, they had Asia Wilson. 
They they had every player out there, so there's no excuse in why some people on Twitter and I mean it's funny because. You know, um, of course, I mentioned that earlier. So, again, I'm going to plug myself on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter because sometimes I say some stuff out there. And I, and I really mean what I say and what I tweet. But there's a lot of people that are just like, well, look, the Sparks, look at where they're at. They're at the ace spot. You can't compete them to to the Vegas Aces. I certainly couldn't comp- compare both of them two together. You know why? Because they played each other. That's the reason why I can compare both of them. And when one outplays the other, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to say it. And I know Coach Kurt Miller really didn't want to emphasize too much on it. I'm going to emphasize for you, Kurt, that you send a message to the league. that you, you showed that the LA Sparks are not to be screwed around here right now at this point in the season. This is the point that you want to be hot and be running and gunning all around. And that's exactly what the Sparks are doing right now. So congratulations on the Sparks and picking up that victory. Again, they will be facing them. Phoenix Mercury against Brittany Griner here at the Galen Center tomorrow night. And I will be talking more about basketball, Team USA, some football, and of course, some baseball. When we return here on These Are The Breaks. What's up, y'all? Hey. This is Lexi Brown with the LA Sparks, and you're watching Infanity TV. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. are the breaks and we're back from you know uh this commercial break of course you guys got a chance to see those promos out there make sure you check out the profanity nation podcast tonight here uh 8 30 pacific only on infanity tv but this weekend here sofi stadium was a uh arena in a stadium that just was so crowded over the last week or so because you had taylor swift take that over for like five six nights consecutive you know sold out nights you know and i'd never gave uh taylor swift the shout out uh last week or the previous week but shout out to taylor swift because you are just um an incredible person um you have so many fans um everyone loves you and even kobe bryant loved you and gave you that uh, that banner that you now have at crypto.com arena. But, and of course, Taylor Swift really took it um, and, you know, give that quick little shout out to, you know, um, Natalia Bryan and the Bryan family who were also at the Taylor Swift concert. And, you know, Kobe's youngest daughter took her up on stage, gave her, you know, her, uh, her hat and stuff. So it was just an incredible moment that that was, uh, that took actually place. So that was a good thing for for that it, it gets me it gets me going when i talk about kobe man i i see i see it's uh it's just crazy that he's not here 
Uh, um, but right now, the Rams, of course, and the Las Vegas Raiders are at SoFi Stadium this past Saturday night. And they didn't worry about no rain at all because they, they had nothing to worry about. Uh, but the Rams had Jimmy Garoppolo to worry about because Jimmy Garoppolo made his preseason debut for the Las Vegas Raiders at SoFi Stadium on Saturday night. And guess what? It, unlike Sean McVay, the Raiders quarterback, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and... You know, the head coach really take preseason pretty serious because they figure like, hey, you know what? In in order for Jimmy to have some success early in the season, he got to get some playing time during the preseason. There is a lot of coaches in the NFL and even in the NBA and even Major League Baseball. A lot of coaches don't like playing their star players during the preseason when it don't matter at all. But certain times you need to get the guys um, a, a couple reps, a couple um plays for them to get under the belt so they can feel a little confident get a hit or two you know get that hit again because i'm sure jimmy garoppolo has not gotten hit uh since maybe december so you gotta get hit once in a while and jimmy garoppolo completed only four passes in his first drive he only played in the first quarter and looked remarkable completing four out of four uh leading the raiders to a touchdown drive Mm. in the first uh quarter so it was spectacular for jimmy garoppolo and let's not forget about the backup quarterback o'connell i mean o'connell came into the game and looked like i mean wow he looked good because that's the reason why the la rams walked away out of sofi stadium Oh, and two in the preseason, of course, you know, Sean McVay can say every single preseason because every single preseason seems like they don't win a game. And the answer that McVay always has is like, hey, well, it's preseason. Well, last season, you barely won five games uh, after winning the Super Bowl. So what does that let you know? You got to get your team situated because you have about 30 some players who are rookies this season in your squad. You only have about 53 slots in your team. So the Rams got a lot, a lot to figure out. Of course, they are still expecting Matthew Stafford to make it back, Cooper Cup to make it back, Aaron Donald to make it back. So they do have a few pieces out there, but I do want to spend some time on the Las Vegas Raiders right now. With with Las Vegas, with what they're doing and what their expectations are this year, they're not that high. You know, you look at the division in the AFC West. You do have the Kansas City Chiefs, who are the defending champions um, in that division. Then you got the Los Angeles Chargers, who are looking like they're trailing the Kansas City Chiefs right there, right behind with the great defense, great offense. But you look at the new uh, head coach and Sean Payton coming over to the Denver Broncos and seeing that Russell Wilson might not be the same Russell that we looked at last season. So we got to put some respect on that a little bit. But then you look at Las Vegas Raiders. It's like, okay, well, the Raiders are going to Raider it all over again every single year, but not this year, it seems like, because the the emergence of Jimmy Garoppolo, how confident he looks like and how excited he is to play in the regular season, I can see the Raiders right now. Early on, a few weeks ago, I was like, well, I don't really see the Raiders winning more than four or five games, if maybe cl- touch close to six. But after watching Jimmy Garoppolo, looking at the way he kind of um, takes himself um, on the field and how he you know talks, it, it makes it makes it seem like okay, we are talking to a veteran in the league. We're not talking to a guy who has no experience in the league. I mean, he has a he has a great connection with uh, Josh McDaniels, who they were both in New England for so many years together while Tom Brady was there winning championships, but. I think the Jimmy Garoppolo uh, game plan and situation and you know the story that's kind of surrounding him right now is going to make him look like a star in Las Vegas and he will win at least about seven to possible eight games. I do see the Raiders being better than the Denver Broncos this season, which is kind of interesting. Very, very interesting because I, I was thinking since the move happened back in March and you looked at you know, Jimmy Garoppolo left the San Francisco 49ers for for nothing, walked over to to Las Vegas and kind of just picked up a good roster, picked up a good fan base. Of course, you know, the Raiders have an amazing fan base. They, they will always have a fan base like no other, especially when they win games because <laughs> for some reason, every time they're winning, it's like all the fans come out of nowhere. But when they're losing, it's like, oh, I'm not a Raider fan. You're going to put that Raider hat away. And it, Raider fans remind me a lot like Laker fans because, you know, when you're winning, it's all up and going. But when you're losing, it's kind of like, 
Ooh, it's tough. It's it's, it's a tough fan base to deal with when you're winning and losing. But um, besides that, you look at what Las Vegas, the city itself, is dealing with. You you are getting a lot a lot of attention with the Las Vegas Aces. You're looking at the possible Las Vegas Athletics, and you know you possibly are looking at another basketball team coming to Las Vegas. A lot of speculation on that. I I cannot wait. They said 2026 might be the year for an NBA team to be taking over Las Vegas. So Las Vegas will be. Uh, a hot spot for sports but another hot spot for sports is right here at infinity tv when we return gonna be talking about some baseball and a little bit more football when we return what's up y'all it's your girl chanel guimake and you're watching infinity television boom A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. These are the breaks. Myself, Fredo Cervantes. And of course, you know, I was talking about some football right now, but I do want to talk about the best football team in Los Angeles, which is the Los Angeles Chargers right now. They did take over SoFi Stadium on Sunday night, which was kind of crazy because um, the talk around town here in Los Angeles for anyone that was not in the Southern California area, everyone was so scared, panicking that Hurricane Hillary was going to destroy <laughs> southern california and i was one of them i was thinking i'm like okay should i get ready for the craziest storm that we're ever going to experience um and you know typical waterfall drops you know landing here in southern california nothing too big nothing too uh crazy because there was a lot of videos out there trending on social media but some of them were fake some of them were real who knows but i can tell you myself that it was not nothing crazy which is typical rain uh regular rainfall here in august which we typically never get something like that but it was okay but it was around you know 90 minutes till kickoff between the charges and the saints went about 85 miles north of sofi stadium up in Ojai, california it was a 5.1 earthquake boom it was crazy i didn't feel it i was um i didn't feel nothing i, I was actually curious because when i got the alert and i was and it said like oh earthquake earthquake and i'm like Wait, earthquake right now? I didn't, I didn't feel anything. I'm like, I'm just walking around, not feeling the damn thing. So with that being said, a lot of people were scared. A lot of people thought the world was going to end. Um, but the world did not end. Of course, we're still alive. We're still here. But 
The New Orleans Saints really took care of business um, and showed that they are something to be um, to be dealt with this season because Jameis Winston, the former number one overall pick in the NFL draft a few years ago, is not the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Of course, he is somewhat of a backup quarterback. Because the New Orleans Saints did sign Derek Carr, former Las Vegas Raider quarterback, uh, during the offseason. So Derek Carr is projected to be the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. But Jameis Winston did incredible things. Jameis reminds me, when I, when I was watching the game on Sunday afternoon with, against the Chargers, I'm looking at Jameis and I'm like, I remember you in college. I, I remember how great... You know, you were in throwing the ball, running around the ball, even in his rookie year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was great, a great ball player, but it just seemed like his problem that he fixed, of course, his problem that was going on in Tampa Bay prior to Tom Brady coming over was his interceptions, man. He threw interception after interception after interception. I mean, a lot of people were calling him Mr. Mr. Interception. Because that's what he was throwing a lot of. And it was getting annoying. It was getting frustrating for a lot of the Tampa Bay coaching staff. And they were like, yeah, this is bye this bye. is not our man. <laughs> they were like, this is not our quarterback. This guy can't even complete the ball to his own team. That's how bad he was. Once he went over to the uh, New Orleans Saints a few years ago, he started improving as a quarterback, playing a lot better ball than he was playing early in his career now he's battling for a position start here with the new orleans saints having Derek card in the lineup now but you know the rain the saints came on uh they took the victory over the los angeles Chargers, 22 to 17 sunday night of course we did get a chance to see easton stick who is coming into his fifth year in the nfl as a backup with the los angeles chargers and easton stick looked good out there he looked good I, I he was impressive um he had impressive throws he had uh some legs that i've never seen before i never seen easton stick run at all he ran for 43 yards on Sunday night, running away from that defense. And, of course, he did throw two interceptions. Were very crucial, one at the very end of the game. The Chargers at one point looked like they were out of the game, trailing the game 22 to, like, 9 or 8 it was. Uh, but then all of a sudden, they get two defensive stops in the fourth quarter. Easton Stick runs in for a six-yard touchdown to cut the lead down to 5, 22 to 17. Then the Chargers get another defensive stop. They get the ball back with under two minutes remaining. They had the opportunity to win the game. But it wasn't until Easton Stick... Through another interception and ended the game for the Los Angeles Chargers at 22 to 17. But it was impressive. It was very impressive, especially what happened in the first half. When you look at the first half, you look at the um, receiver in Quinton Johnson, who did catch three ta uh, three catches yesterday for 47 yards, uh, completed, and also was only targeted three times. So if he was only targeted three times, he caught all three times and made great impressive plays as well, running for one for almost 26 yards as well. So it was good for Quinton Johnson to keep getting his feet wet only in his second team and only in the second game um, in his rookie season here with the LA Chargers. But let's, let me take it back to Easton Stick. Easton Stick really made some things stick out. And I, I, I come to realization to see like, okay, well, there's Max Duggan as well, who is another rookie quarterback that came over from TCU, who was just in the national championship game this past uh, season, lose, lost the game, but he was still there. And he has a great resume, great resume, great quarterback in the league. And Easton Stick, not too sure why Brandon Staley right now has Easton Stick as our backup quarterback. I know, I know for sure that he realizes now after week two of preseason that Easton Stick is not the number two quarterback in this roster right now. It got to be Max Duggan. I'm not here to say that, you know, Easton Stick got to take a, a stick and maybe go walk outside the park and try to, you know, fish out in the pond right there that SoFi has. But there is some preparation that the Chargers got to go ahead and realize to get it together before something or when if something occurs to Justin Herbert. We know that when a player like him get a contract, they tend to kind of, you know, um, 
be a little more careful, of course. The refs, the the NFL refs really know. They know it right now. It is something that Roger Goodell is running down their throats. And they're like, hey, refs, do you understand how much Justin Herbert's getting paid? Please do not let any player get nowhere near Justin Herbert because he's worth a lot of money. And nobody, nobody, body, body wants to go ahead and be the man to get Justin Herbert heard like the uh, Chiefs did last season. But there's a lot of football remaining. Of course, the Chargers do face the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco this upcoming Friday night. And the Rams face off the Denver Broncos Saturday night in Denver. Both LA teams will be away and will be returning in September for the week one. And that is all here with the breaks. Myself, Fredo Cervantes. It was a pleasure to speak with you guys. And I hope to see you guys next Tuesday. Peace.